Hello everyone and welcome to another video where today I'm going to be talking about the top 5 cars I think everybody should know about and be willing to give a try. Of course, in recent weeks with everything going on in the world, we've had an explosion of accounts joining iRacing which is fantastic with more people joining the community and more people learning about the world of sim racing as well, but it's very easy to get lost in the complete plethora of series we have on the iRacing.com platform. So I want to give a bit more direction to what cars you should be looking at investing to really maximize your dollar overall, get yourself into the most amount of series that you can. And also, what are the cars that are the most fun and are going to teach you the most to develop as a driver on the simulator? But before we get into the first car in our list, if you do like the video, guys, hitting the subscribe button down below would help me out an absolute ton. We're trying to get up as high as we can before my birthday in a couple of months. Maybe even check me out on twitch.tv forward slash Bo Albert as well. I stream throughout the weeks. Join the discussion there. Let me know what you think if you think my opinions are absolutely garbage when it comes to this list. But otherwise, let's get into car number one. GT3 cars are a staple of iRacing competition and are found in a number of series from IMSA, VRS GT Endurance and Sprint Championships, the iRacing Endurance Series itself, and many more. However, when it comes to GT3, my recommendations for those starting out on the platform go to the Audi R8 GT3 LMS and the Mercedes AMG GT3. My reasoning behind this is during the yearly iRacing special events, the majority that include the GT3 class of cars only allow these two options, such as the Daytona 24 hours and Sebring 12 hours just to list two examples off the top of my head. Therefore, by choosing one of these two cars, you maximize your dollar by increasing the amount of series and events you are able to use this particular car for. Deciding between these two cars is also a fairly simple equation. Are you looking for the ultra-fast, kind-on-its-tires mid-engine Audi, but with a tendency to be less driver-friendly and feels like it's going to murder you at any second if you even think about a curb for a nanosecond? Or are you looking for a much safer experience in the Mercedes AMG, which is kinder to its driver, especially over an endurance race over, let's say, three, four consecutive stints, and still has some incredible straight line speed, but does suffer in tire wear at the front and occasionally in outright lap time in the more technical sections on a circuit? A GT3 is a great learning experience for those starting out in iRacing, though, with their driver assist, including ABS and trash control. These cars will teach you everything you need to know about throttle and braking inputs to get the most out of any car in GT machinery. The competition is always super close thanks to these cars having assists, so don't walk into any GT3 race expecting to ever be lonely. They pick the slipstream up fantastically and are very popular with some of the higher i rated guys on the service, so you'll have plenty of competition at all times throughout the day. Next up on the list, we go to a very different side of iRacing from GT3 as we move over to the world of NASCAR and picking up one of the latest versions of the Cup Series cars should be very high on your to buy list. These cars are one of the most frequently used and updated in iRacing thanks to a very strong partnership developed alongside NASCAR itself. These cars are one of the more friendly to race in the Oval Series thanks to increased aero and general mechanical grip compared to the C-Class trucks or the B-Class Xfinity cars. This improved drivability means the racing and the margins between winning and losing in these cars are super close and you will always have a stellar race on your hands whether you are working the high banks of Daytona or Charlotte or hard on the brakes of the road courses featured across the season. These cars are used in the relaxed carburetor cup which are always a large amount of fun but are also used in the high-level e-NASCAR Coca-Cola series and NASCAR iRacing series, which replicates the real-world calendar, allowing you to experience a full NASCAR season in competition. If you want to get your oval fix on iRacing and want to get the most out of your dollar, one of the three Class A NASCARs are surely hard to look past. Moving over to the roadside again, we change to the open wheel racer with a very high number of active drivers and some great competition. I'm not talking about the Skip Barber as many might expect though. Sure, the Skippy does give you some great racing, but in terms of developing as a driver if you are new to iRacing and providing a unique experience unlike any other car given to you as free content, I feel the Delara Formula 3 is a better alternative. The Delara Formula 3 is a very lively open wheeler car which provides some phenomenal racing at high speeds down both the straights and through the twisty corners at Spa, Silverstone and hell, Belle Isle just to name a few. 
The car features the gorgeous new damage model, ability to race against iRacing's AI, and it's one of the cars that it really has gelled fantastically with the new tyre model, allowing you to throw the car in and attack all race long. The car is used in only two series being the Pure Driving School Formula Sprint and the Simucube Formula 3 series, but both of these are highly popular and seeing consistent race registrations into the hundreds is not uncommon. Especially for the drivers new to iRacing that are looking into the high downforce options, let's say Formula 1, Formula Renault 3.5s or even the LMP1 cars, I think these cars are a great tool to learn in as you will develop very quickly in how to deal with a dirty air effect in the corners, how to really attack with downforce and load the car up on entry into a high speed corner, and also just general racecraft which is a lot more high stakes in open wheel cars with any kind of contact, typically leading to disaster. A super fun car that I highly recommend to anybody to try out. Coming in at number 4 on our list of 5 is a car that is gaining a lot of publicity at the moment, and that is the Porsche 911 GT3 Cup car. The reason I've put the Porsche on this list is because, let's face it, every driver is curious when they first jump onto the simulator just how far off or how close they are to the top guys on the platform. And this particular car is used in iRacing's flagship roadside series, the Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup. If you want to challenge yourself against the best in iRacing's road discipline, this is the car to use as a benchmark. Along with that, this car is a challenge to drive and very rewarding when you get it right. The lack of ABS in this re-engined car means it requires a delicate touch on the brake, and I would argue if you can master the brakes on this car, you can master any car without ABS on the simulator, so it is a fantastic training tool for other disciplines. This car requires a driving style where you need to drive the car on the rear to be fast, almost in a constant dance and keeping you entirely on the limit. It is almost unlike anything else on the platform in this regard as often you are in a situation in iRacing where you need to drive the car straight to avoid snap oversteer or just in general take care of your car's tyre life. But this is an exception to the rule and something that everybody needs to try once. I will concede that it may not be for everyone, but as I said, master this car and there isn't much on the simulator that can stop you from moving forward. Fifth and final car on our list today is a GTE car. GTE cars are just like GT3 cars, but on absolute steroids. Faster lap times, wider tyres, more aero and no ABS. They are a great test of skill and is probably the most competitive category in multi-class competition in iRacing. In GTE, you get the choice between the Ferrari 488 GTE, the Porsche 991 RSR and the Ford GT LM. But my vote for which car you should pick up goes to the BMW M8 GTE. The reason behind this is similar to that of the GT3 selection. By choosing the BMW, you allow yourself into even more series than the other cars, with the inclusion of the BMW 12.0 Sprint Racers and the 6 round BMW 120 races that go for, well, 120 minutes, and are a team race with some prizes on the line too. Therefore, you're going to get the most bang for your buck in terms of series eligibility. GTE is used also in IMSA and the iRacing Le Mans series, which are right up there for the most participated series on the site, so you're always guaranteed great racing in a multi-class situation, but the GTE cars are often ending up as the star attraction. Balance of performance keeps the competition tight as always, but the BMW M8 is usually right up the front with the best of the drivers, and despite its big boy appearance, it is very nice on tyres and very adaptable to driving styles with the right setup. You can make the car do a lot of things for a lot of drivers, which is rare for motorsport race cars, which are often best suited to one particular driving style to make them go quickly. The BMW allows you to have complete freedom. You can drive it very aggressively or you can drive it smooth and still achieve that same lap time. But of course, when it comes to endurance racing, a smooth driving style is always going to pay dividends on both fuel and tyre wear. So guys, they are my top 5 cars I think everybody on iRacing should own and give a try. Let me know down below in the comments if you disagree with any of my choices or let me know which cars taught you the most about iRacing. If you did enjoy guys, I'd appreciate if you hit the subscribe button down below or even checked me out over at twitch.tv forward slash Albert. I'm streaming throughout the week 
and links will be down in the description, including a link to my Discord where we have almost 150 members now, all talking complete garbage about sim racing and the real world of motorsport when hopefully it continues after all of the COVID-19 situation. But guys, until next time, I'm out. Peace.